Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Happy Wednesday to everyone. I'm so happy that you could be here to spend some time with me today. We're going to be creating this very festive Christmas folio. Before we get started on that though, I did want to just remind everyone that we did begin our Making Memories Monday series this week and so we are documenting October. I did have a quick overview of what the series will be and then we made the first three layouts in the book. So this is a very casual craft with me style video. And if that sounds like something that you would enjoy, I hope that you will join me Monday nights at seven for Making Memories Monday. And now on to our folio today. So I just wanted to combine many of the things I love into one project. So for this folio, we have pockets, we have envelopes, and we have flip pages, and I combine those into sort of a hybrid base. I think it will be very practical for many different occasions, many different holidays, and this is a really great stash buster. So each of these pockets is going to have an insert and a cut apart image from the collection. And then all of these will fit nicely into these pockets. There's a little additional room for some flat keepsakes and mementos. And so this all folds up nicely into our folio. If you are interested in creating a folio like this, then stick with me and we will make so we're working with this Simple Stories Make It Merry 12 by 12 collection kit. I always love everything Simple Stories creates. This particular collection has a very retro vibe and all the pattern papers have very bright, cheerful colors. So this is going to be perfect for our festive folio. For the cover, we're going to need two envelopes. I'm just going to use this envelope punch board. I'll follow the chart here it directs me to cut my paper to be eight and seven eighths by eight and seven eighths and then score it at three and three quarters so i'll just punch that and add my score lines and repeat that process till i get all four sides done i'll flip over my punch board here and then just round off those corners to give it a nice finished edge when i get those done i do want to crease my score lines and then run the score tool over it so that we can reduce a little bit of that bulk so i'm just using some scrap paper to for today's project, we are going to switch to a white card stock. This is 65 pound weight, and I did add some double sided adhesive to all of the inside portions of the flaps here. So I'm just going to pull one of them in so that it is adhered to the back. Now what we need is something to connect the envelopes. So I'll switch to 110 pound card stock here and my piece is cut to be six and five eighths by nine and three quarter it's scored at four and five eighths and also five and one eighth so that's going to give us a half an inch spine this is a good place to come in with your two glue combination not only will it be sturdier but that double-sided tape will hold it together while the glue sets up so i'll just run a thin line around not getting too close to the edge so it doesn't squeeze out I'm going to fold it right on the score line and then join those two score lines together. So I've got it lined up right along that edge. That'll give us a good, clean, crisp fold on that. I'll just go ahead and press that into place now and fold over the remaining flaps. And so this is going to close that 110 pound card stock in. And this is going to give us such a nice, crisp, clean fold all the way around on the outside edge. So I want to repeat that process for the other side and we'll just go back to pulling the backing off of our tape and adding some additional glue. So I think if you wanted to have sections in here, maybe two with pockets, you would just want to increase the width 
or the depth of that spine, you could go up to maybe an inch and then you could add some additional items on the inside. So I'll just go ahead and adhere this to our second envelope now. I think the hardest part is keeping your fingers out of the glue. So I'll just pull over our remaining envelope and fold that flap in so that it's adhered to the back. Now I can bring in my 110 pound card stack in the same for that first envelope. I'm just lining up those score lines right along the edge and making sure that we get a good crisp crease on the spine. Then I'll fold over the remaining flaps and close that up. This is such a nice sturdy cover and I think I'll be repeating this process again in the future because I think that it just looks so nice and clean. Okay so I want to have my pockets on the left hand side. They are just a bit narrower than the width of the cover. So I do want to add a second piece of cardstock here just to give this a nice finished clean look. And so this is just a piece that is six and five eighths high by four and seven eighths inch wide. This just gives it a little bit of extra sturdiness and makes it nice and clean and finished. So I'll just press now it's time to work on our pockets and I'm starting with three pieces of 65 pound weight card stock. The first one is 11 inches high by five and a half inches wide. I've scored it a half an inch in from either side. I flipped it and then made an additional score line at six inches. I'm gonna come in and remove the excess portion here where I have this indicated with my pencil line. You could use a guillotine cutter for this to get a good sharp line and you will want to repeat this process for each of these pockets. Once you have that excess removed, fold over the bottom portion and then the side you'll want to remove just a bit of that corner so that you can reduce some of the bulk. Once you fold that over, it's going to create the bottom and the sides of your pocket. For the next size down, it is nine and a half inch high by five and a half inch wide, scored at half an inch on the side. This time it is five and a half inches deep, and so you'll just go ahead and line those up. The last one is six and a quarter by five and a half, same score lines on the side. This time it is going to be four and a quarter. You do want to cover the inside of these pockets before you seal them up. I decided to use the same pattern for each just as a nice background. So I cut a strip of 12 inch paper to be four and three eighths inch wide. And that will give me that nice border of the white card stack showing around the top and the side. So it doesn't matter that it doesn't cover the whole inside of the pocket because once you fold those up, it will be concealed inside. So I'll just go and take off the backing from this tape and fold over the flaps here. This is a good place to have your two glue combination. And so I'll just grab that Tombow and add a little line around for this to be extra sturdy because these pockets will be filled in so you want it to be very secure. Now remember our pockets are not quite as wide as the book base so that we have plenty of room for this to fold properly. So for each of these pockets, we'll just repeat that same process. And these gussets on the side are going to give us lots of room for those inserts that we're gonna add as well as some additional flat keepsakes and mementos. So I'll just go ahead and repeat that process for each of these pockets, being careful to line them up along the top. That will help it to be easier to take things in and out and this is another great place to consider working with your stash as long as these papers coordinate they don't need to come from the same collection so once i get that last one in place i'll grab a layering pattern for the pocket this is going to be a one and seven eighths inch high by four and three eighths 
For the right hand side, this is going to be a full size page flip. So our cardstock is six and five eighths by nine and a quarter, scored at four and five eighths. And I'll just add this to the right hand side. This is another place for two glues, and I'll line that up along those score lines. So this is also going to have a tip in and so the cardstock for that is four inches high by five inches wide and scored at four the pattern paper is three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths i did finish the back of that tip in as well this piece of pattern cardstock is six and a half high by four and a half wide and i'll just wrap that around the back so that i can capture it between those layers so this is going to be the front of the flip page along with the tip in. I finished one portion on the inside and here is. So we have our coordinating patterns on the pages that show together. Now we want to begin working on our inserts. I'm starting with 110 pound paper and I've got a piece for the back that is a five and a half inches high by four inches wide. And the pattern paper for this is five and three eighths high by three and seven eighths inch wide. This is going to be the tallest one and it will go in the back. I'm going to clip on one of these images from the cutter part sheet. This will just increase the amount of room we have for pictures and journaling and you can write directly on to the back of that large insert because it is a nice neutral surface. So we'll just tuck that first one in the back. Our second set of inserts is going to be five high by four wide for the card stack and the pattern paper is four and seven eighths high by three and seven eighths inch wide. Here's an additional image clipped on and this will be slipped into that middle pocket. The last one is going to be cardstock measurement of four high by four wide and the pattern paper is three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. I'm not going to clip a large cut apart on that. We're just going to include a couple of the tags from the collection. So I just picked ones that I thought would match and they're a great place to add journaling on the back as well because there are lines. So we'll just tuck those in to the now I want to finish the back cover and for that I did decide to add a solid green cardstock. The cardstock is going to measure six and five eighths high by four and five eighths wide and the pattern paper is six and a half by four and a half. For the front I added a strip of my double sided adhesive. I'm going to use that to tack on a piece of this beautiful red plaid ribbon from Really Reasonable Ribbon and I'll just capture that between the layers of the front cover and the base. I do want to neutralize a little bit of that busy pattern paper so I'm going to bring in a die cut doily and just add that closer to the left and top corner. Here is my image from the collection and I just used a tag shaped die to cut that out. I've added an eyelet and a little bit of twine there and popped it up on a spacer. So here's my flowers combination of Made By Me and Little Birdie Crafts and I'm just going to use that to anchor this bottom corner. Of course I did add my die cut foliage and some netting and loopy twine bows to fill that in and that will be the left hand corner to balance that I want to include a couple of these little charms here. I've tied them on string and I'll capture that in some hot glue and then I can just cut off the excess string and cover those cut ends with a button and then the last detail for the cover is some sequins and I can attach those with my tom. Now, last but not least, there is some details that I want to bring out with a little bit of stickle. So I'm just going to add a little bit here to these berries and also on the top where the cardinal has a little flower and some leaves. And that is going to be it for our folio today. If you enjoyed this project, make sure to leave me a comment and a big thumbs up. 
You can find links in the description for all of our socials. And remember that we have our new series starting on Monday. I hope that you plan to join me for that. If you're not already, I would love for you to join our family by subscribing to this channel. As always, I'm wishing you a happy and productive day. And I thank you so much for watching. Bye.